Hey everybody, good evening and welcome to a new pilot show for us, uh, Kick-Ass Robot Drawings with Christine. We got Christina Tia uh, on the line here, who is our master artist. Christine, how's it going? Good, how about you? You know, I'm, I'm hanging in there, it's summertime, there's not a whole lot of robots going on, a, a few things, right, for off-season events, but uh, you know, what better way to spend our summer than, you know, indoors on camera, right? Exactly, enjoying the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna transition over, uh, and we're gonna talk a little about what we're doing today. And we hope that uh, you are able to uh, follow along with us and check it out. Uh, we'll have a little bit of kind of background music playing uh, to hopefully fill some of the, uh, any of the quietness voids because we're gonna be doing some drawing. Uh, if you are interested uh, in picking up the drawing here, we're gonna post that link for you. Uh, and I hope I just put that up. I believe I did. Yep. So you can actually download uh, tonight's drawing to follow along with us. Have some fun here. I just put it in the chat. And uh, if you want to draw along with us, that's great. We'd love to have you uh, either tweet or share your photos with us on Facebook uh, and let us know what you did. The cool thing is about this, Christine, right? Like, I mean, you're going to be doing something awesome. I am a terrible, terrible at any sort of drawing at all. Like coloring, drawing, I never really was good at it uh so mine's probably going to look a little bit different than yours and that's kind of the cool thing like, i mean this is you don't have to draw within the lines right if you want to color something pink color it pink right absolutely you can make 330s robot look like you know the pink team so totally that's a, to you. <laughs> that's, that's a really good point i might do that actually so uh <laughs> why don't you talk about uh can you talk about a little bit what we're going to be doing today uh a little bit about kind of the inspiration between behind what you're doing and i know we got a we have a whole bunch of different things here, but there's kind of a, a theme that goes along with it. Yeah, so a lot of these things are just, I don't know, fun, silly drawings of things that I love about first. So 3.30 up in the corner, um, we were rewatching those matches on my team the other day from last year's champs, and the fact that they fell over like three times in the semis on Einstein and got up and still won absolutely blows my mind. Um, Mr. EJ in the corner got some trophies, which were really fun to draw. Um, I had actually done one of these drawings for my opening slide at the Champs Conference that I, I did. Um, the banner in the center, I tried my best. Sometimes <laughs> you just need to, you know, commend yourself for trying. Uh, rope, because I'm so glad that we won't have to hear people screaming rope too much longer. There's only a few more off-seasons left before we may not see ropes again next year. Um, paper airplanes, this one's for Libby, because, you know, just just don't throw them. And the bottom one, so 50 <laughs> 12 at the Las Vegas regional when their bumper just somehow came unhinged and they drove around like a snake for a long time. Um, that provided a lot of laughs and humor on 125. Was rewatching that clip that Caltran got from the, the live feed so yeah if anybody has that if you could if you could post that that'd be fantastic so we can kind of see exactly what that is because i remember <laughs> i remember seeing it it's just i i don't have it handy so it'd be really cool to be able to see something like that yeah but it's it's interesting too so like you know while drawing these things when i was drawing 330 i thought about those like oh crap moments that you may have on the field that end up turning into something pretty amazing or I was watching that Vegas clip and thinking about how in New England, the moment your bu your bumpers start wiggling, that's when they e stop you. So, <laughs> you can definitely talk more about this type of stuff later on. But yeah, but I think we should get drawn here. Uh, so uh, I, you know, as I said, the complete new person. I went to the Dollar Tree and picked up a amazing pack of colored pencils here for a dollar, and then somebody pointed out. Uh, that I got a pair of pencil sharpeners. And not only is it a pencil sharpener, which I don't even know they made anymore, it's also a dual eraser. So I'm very, uh, very proud of this here. And I'm gonna see well, how it works out. Dude, my students would kill each other to, to get one of those on their hands. Well, they're two, for, nice. two, two for a dollar at Dollar Tree, so. Good you go. to know. So you're, you're drawing with markers today. So what, I mean, you're, you're the master here. So why, why markers? What kind of makes you wanna well, do that? I've got a plethora. I'm not going to use markers that much. Um, I do have the coveted Mr. Sketch markers, though, so my drawing is going to smell especially good. Um, I also have some awesome crayons. These happen to be construction paper crayons, which show up on dark surfaces. And then I have my handy-dandy watercolor pencils, which I'll probably use as regular color pencils. But literally anything works. It's just how you use the tool. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get going with that. The great thing about colored pencils, though, is you can get 
a variety of color out of one single color sure. determined like based on how hard you're pressing. So if you are coloring along with us, that is awesome. You should definitely take photos and tag first updates now and word play all day in it. So I'd love to see what you guys are doing on your end of the camera. So, and I just want to mention here, uh, and Mike pointed out, we do have two different camera angles, and I want to do that on purpose. So mine's mirrored, but it's vertically flipped, uh, so we can see a little bit, because Christine's going to, you're going to have yours turned around, right? Uh, so you'll be able to see a couple different angles here and kind of get a, a, a feel of what this is going to look like here. So, uh, yeah, let's let's kick it off, Christine. Which one are we going to do first? Um, I'm going to start with 330. So okay. I'm going to start off with some colored pencils, because that's usually what I go for. Um, can talk about the some of the tricks that I use when I color in bumpers is usually around the edges. I kind of press hard. So you're, you're, going, you're going blue bumpers, huh? I am going blue bumpers. All right. I may do their robot a different color though, because you don't want to have too much blue. So I usually start off with kind of pressing hard around the shape of the bumper. And that kind of gives you the volume or the illusion of volume. Pressing harder. All right. I'll be channeling my inner Bob Ross tonight. Yes. Um, <laughs> sadly, my hair is not as epic as his. <laughs> I've already gone outside the lines here, so we're, oh, we're, we're past the point of no return because apparently, you know what? <laughs> apparently uh, erasing colored pencils sucks, apparently, so according to our chat. Yeah, that, that doesn't really work so, so well. So you, you, so you go darker on the, on the outside of it, you said? Yep. Kind of emphasizes the shape of it. Um, Another thing that I like to do, you want to. I already broke think about mine. Them. Oh, that's because you bought them at the dollar store. That's why they were a dollar. <laughs> Invest wisely. So, another thing to keep in mind, too, if you're getting really hard to use tonight, is the direction that your um, mark making is going. So, if you want to kind of make it look like it's kind of fuller, you're going to want to go vertically. All that fun stuff. And these drawings are particularly small, so um, you don't have to get too crazy with different shades and all that stuff. Right. I'm going to get some yellow for the numbers. I miss the days where your bumpers could be literally any color you wanted them to be. Oh, you're dating yourself. Yeah, I totally, totally um, agree with that. Because you can make it towards your theme, right, and what you like best. But now we get standards or banners or whatever they call them. Yeah. We actually did a demo for a group of middle school students today, and we were showing them videos from the past, and we showed them the Stronghold um, like game video, and I never noticed that there's a standard that like folds down, and it's got a slice of pizza on it, and it's awesome. Slice of pizza. Yeah. Team pizza. How am I falling behind? I'm just not as good at coloring it. I think you're overthinking it. That's oh, another yeah. thing. Over you just here. gotta go with oh, it. Oh, I didn't get this one over here. That's that's why. Uh, okay. It's so with the colored pencil, it's hard to make it like darker though. You know, <laughs> like I press harder and I just break the pencil each time. Apparently. We don't want to press too hard. You can you can go over the same area like many times. Sure. But, and my bumper's done. Well, ish. Yeah. Oh, the crap! The backside. I got it. Yeah. Don't want to forget that. And I'm gonna go for a pink 330 because why not? <laughs> Dedicating this beach bot to uh, Mike D. All right, I don't have pink, but I have purple, so we'll. I'll go. You don't even have pink. Right no, it didn't come in my dollar ten pack of colored pencils. You know, I'm gonna like Amazon Prime so, use some better. So what are you? Pencils. So what are you coloring here? Like the arms? Yep. So, just kind of going for it. Um, not gonna press too hard. Not gonna press too light. Trying to stay inside the lines. <laughs> I feel like that was a shot at me already. <laughs> Never. So, you know, I'll tell you, uh, so one of the things in, in high school, uh, when I was on the first team, I actually got into the digital animation, and I got I got pretty heavy into it. And, you know, the one thing that, that actually deterred me a lot is that I, I talked to, um, there was a person at the time who kind of was a rep for Autodesk in first, who I got really close to. His name was uh, Ted Boardman. Um, and, you know, he, he told me, though, he's like, you know, you can be as good as you want in digital animation, but he goes, you have to know how to draw because you, you have to be able to visualize and concept that way and kind of then, you know, you got to do your storyboarding, right, and extrapolate from yeah. there. And that was something that, you know, I, I, it kind of, uh, drawing was never good for me, so I kind of like, I kind of shied away from digital animation after that. Oh, man. That's something that I feel like is, you either have it or you don't. It's 
harder to learn how to digitally create things than it is, in my opinion, to like actually just physically draw them. Um, well, and, and he always told me the opposite. He said, you know, learn how to draw first, and then then you can learn the digital side. Oh, interesting. So, so that's actually your your next career step, apparently, your next uh, <laughs> evolution of that. Oh boy, it's funny when we were doing our uh, like chairman's video stuff or just any video on my team, I, I have nothing to do with it because my brain just does not function that way at all. So I'm getting into my wheels. I couldn't really tell if 330 had three or four wheels on each side. I think it's four, so I think I messed it up. But, um, how another, dare you? I know, how dare me. Um, another like trick that I use when I'm working on my robot drawings is the insides of the robots, I'll usually just kind of go in with black, and then I'll use like a, a red or a white highlight to do the wires or some of the motors. Um, but then that that way, like the black kind of enhances the other colors. Yeah, that so makes like on, sense. Yeah, you're adding you're adding contrast and depth, right? Yeah. So on the 118 drawing that I just finished up today, which was hands down the most intensive drawing that I've done of a robot so far. Um, I kind of used that trick where I added lots of blacks hmm. around like the areas where I couldn't really see the definition of the wiring and stuff and then added in some pops of color and it definitely helped. So so they beat out uh, Wave Robotics as 2015 robot? Yeah, I'd say they're kind of tied, but 118's robot from this year was just like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so what about what about things like uh, well those are wheels on the other side so it's pretty much wheels and then wires on the inside right? Yeah. Okay. And everything else is really just a lot of um, like luckily with robots a lot of parallel lines and if you can kind of figure out the spacing and the angles that things are at it makes it a lot easier. Sure. Unlike you know drawing a human or something else that's more organic shaped um, like drawing a robot for me is a lot easier because it's very linear. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to grab one of my awesome crayons. All right, so that's one of those uh, words that everybody says differently, depending what part of the country you're from or what part of the world you're from. You know, like crayons? Because some people say crayons, and Crayon. people say crayons. And... <laughs> Mike could only find Sharpies in various colors. That's so sad. That's, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> my, so in my classroom I have I try to give my students a little bit of everything like there there's a box of Mr. Sketch Markers for every table a box of colored Sharpies and every kid just wants to color every drawing in Sharpie and Mr. Sketch Markers and one day I just like let them do it and I was like alright now look at your work and they were like oh it looks really bad because the colors are really flat but hmm. it's better than no color and at all and then you got a bunch of phone calls from parents pissed off because they're all huffing Sharpies during art class <laughs> They're mostly huffing the Mr. Sketch markers. You would not believe how yeah. many like rainbow dots I see under their noses, and then they're like, "No, no, no! I swear, I wasn't." <laughs> I tell them, I tell them they can sniff the paper after they've used the marker, but they can't sniff the marker itself. And apparently that's wow. not good enough. So. What well, uh, What did you do for the wires? So for the wires, I did a little bit of red. Um, what else did I do? I didn't really do much else because it's such a tiny little detail, but. Sure. Did my little pop of red there. I'll do some red too. I don't know if that's a yeah. wire, but I'm doing it. I kind of like 330's robot pink. I like how 254 photoshops their robot for every holiday. Really? I don't know if I've seen all that. Oh, it's on their Facebook page. Hmm. It's awesome. I uh, forgot to mention, too, for anybody watching, if you're not familiar with us or have you seen a few of us, we definitely appreciate it. If you uh, were to click that little follow button, if you're watching on desktop in the upper right-hand corner, uh, if you're watching on mobile, if you don't mind following us, that'd be awesome. We're also a Twitch partner. Uh, we'd be delighted to have your subscription. You can also subscribe for free through Twitch Prime. You get some cool uh, custom emotes. We're going to be having a uh, subscriber town hall coming up. We're going to be unveiling some of the new stuff we're thinking about. This is one of them. Uh, for the 2018 season. We'd love to have your support. Thank you very much. So now we're going to the uh, text here. Yeah. 
So when you look at the, the text versus the robot here, so the, the, the copy that you have, uh, how, do you, how do you envision that? So when I'm in marketing, right? So it's all about eyeball flow, right? Um, mm -hmm. So like, do you, do you want to really accentuate the text? Do you want to keep the, 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 the eyeballs on the robot? How does that work? Yeah, so I think it, it, for this part of the drawing, it was mainly about the robot and then I did the text around it. Um, one of my favorite things to work with besides drawing robots is different fonts. Um, I love looking at handmade font. I think it's a, an amazing art form that you know a lot of people have kind of been reviving in the art world, which I think is really awesome now that there's like all these crazy computer gadgets and other things that you can you know do a lot of digital design on. Um, doing it by hand is really rewarding. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I do want to point out, uh, Caltrain, if you didn't notice, you got an upgraded badge. Thank you for your six months, buddy. Appreciate it. Nice. It's blue now. I just noticed, that just happened to me. I just noticed that, too, on mine. Oh, man. All right. Might do some overlapping of colors here. All right. So, do you remember? Like, did you learn in in school at some point about like complementary colors and all that? Fun <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> but does that mean I paid attention and remember that? No. <laughs> Sweet. I mean, yeah. I mean, the last time I took an art class was probably like eighth grade or something. I'm guessing. But... That's so crazy. I mean, same goes for me with a math class. The last time I took a math class was my senior was eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I felt like I could actually like tackle my math class was probably eighth grade. There so, <laughs> so uh, let, let's talk about you a little bit. So, because we didn't really introduce that. So, of course, you're on one twenty five. The neutrons. Uh, yeah. you're, you're an art teacher, though. So, how the heck is an art teacher? Well, one, what got you into that, and then how did you get into first that way? Yeah. So. Um... I I mean, I liked art as a kid, like elementary school. It was fun. It was good. Um, but it wasn't until high school, probably, that I got really into it. I went to my freshman orientation and went down the art wing. And there was a teacher that was working on the potter's wheel. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like, I walked into the ceramics room, and my teacher, Mr. Hare, was there. He was, like, the nicest, most personable guy. And he was just, like, very slowly and like majestically pulling this like two foot vase on the potter's wheel. And I was like, that's it. Like I need to take this class. So yeah. I got heavy into ceramics, um, like blew through all those classes before the end of my sophomore year and then kind of dove into the rest of the art curriculum there. Um, and then on the robotics side, my grandfather was mentoring my hometown team, 175, when I was in the third grade and kind of like invited my family over to the high school and was like, you got to check out what I'm doing. Um, he was an engineer for United Technologies and we got hooked as a family. So starting in the third grade, I kind of traveled around like a little groupie with 175 and the rest is history. Um, one of my mentors on my high school robotics team um, inspired me to kind of go into teaching because I loved working with people. That was probably my favorite thing about robotics was like working with all different types of people from all different types of backgrounds, with different skill sets, um, you know, learning things that I would have otherwise never learned in high school. Like I wouldn't have learned how to use all the machinery in the shop. Um, but working with people was really my passion. So yeah. my mentor kind of pushed me into doing it. And I, I love my job. Um, I teach at two elementary schools outside of the city. I have 600 students between the two schools. Um, they range from first grade to fifth grade, and it's really cool to see them year to year kind of evolve and change and, um, like, go through, like, really hard times and really good times. Like, watching a kid tie a shoe for the first time is probably one of the most amazing things that I get to see as a teacher, as lame as it sounds. <laughs> like, you yeah. can see those little moments where they do something for the first time or, you know, they grasp a concept. So, and... It's cool because, like, as an art teacher that, you know, does robotics and other things that aren't really artistic, um, I get to kind of bring that into my classroom, and my students really enjoy it, and it kind of brings a new approach to art because not every kid loves art. Um, I mean, I didn't love art as an elementary school student. I thought it was kind of hard, and I was kind of discouraged because there were so many other kids that were way better than me, but um, 
just being able to get them to at least appreciate it is pretty cool. Very cool. That's awesome, yeah. Christine. Thanks. Um, so, so, yeah. Mike, so can we talk about how I'm trying to color? I try my best. I'm going all sorts of lines. You can go outside the lines. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's all for fun. It's not for, yeah. for the grade. Except, Mike, you do have to post your drawing after. That's the, yeah. That's the catch. All right. I'm moving on to... Right. I, think, I think I'm going to go to the trophy next. Okay. That thing is just, like, staring at me. So I'm just going to I'm gonna bring you up on the, the full screen here. So this is the keep your silver, give me that gold. Yeah. And uh, we might have heard that a few times uh, <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> So of course that's uh, the on one forty eight that was their their theme song. I forget what the song name was called, but I'm pretty sure I can look it up. I feel like somebody needs to make a Spotify playlist of like every really awesome reveal video song because there's so many in there. Right, I think it's Unstoppable. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, Unstoppable by the Score. That was an awesome song. Yeah, absolutely. So, and of course uh, us on Fun we. Uh, our producer Nick is on 148, uh, and like they give him a lot of crap because, of course, uh, 148 uh, took silver many times this year, <laughs> uh, and it's always just kind of a, a fun thing to point out for him. So, yeah, I definitely feel for him. Yeah. 125 definitely had a uh, a lot of a lot of silver this year, which was so close to being gold, but. Still good. I, I was gonna say, it, it's. I mean, it's so hard to complain about something like that. And yeah. you know, coming, I, I've been on. I think you and I have been on both sides of the coin. Where we've been on, you know, very successful teams, and we've also been on teams that have not been successful. And it, it's it's so easy to be like, you know, oh man, all we did was get the you know the semifinals this year. It's like, yeah. man, like high school me would have killed for that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Funny. But of course, you guys weren't semifinalists as well at championships. You were not, but yeah. in your division. Well, you—I guess you were semifinalists at the World Champ at the Einstein Field. Yeah, along with several other teams that yeah. tied second place. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to them. You know, first is becoming to get be known for ties. I think so. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully not. Oh, so, pencil down. A cool thing that happened last year, uh, 125 went out to the Flagstaff for the what was it, Arizona North Regional, and mm -hmm. our third alliance partner, the Cobra Commanders, that was their first win, like first regional win ever, and it was so cool to like be there with them when they had that moment, because yeah. I think like, I mean, I don't think our students or our team members ever like you know, take for granted a win, but to see somebody like get their, their first team win, you know, as like a pretty, like as an older team is a pretty cool thing. Um, or like sometimes the MCs at, at events will do that cheesy thing where they're like, Oh, rookie awards. We're about to see a rookie, you know, win their first award ever. Like it is, it is pretty cool to think about, especially when you've been in the program for so long, you kind of forget that like some people have that first moment. Yeah. You know, I never thought about that, and of course, you know, I MC a lot, and I've never, I guess, pointed that out, uh, that they're going to win their first award, and really how, how big of a deal that really is, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm going to do the Keep Your Silver, Give Me That Gold in red, because Ooh. that's cause that's the second place color. <laughs> I'm feeling the blue tonight. So sometimes you can, I mean, if you have a limited color spectrum with your coloring stuff it's not a bad thing sometimes if it's colored pencil it's definitely okay um like i said before if you apply more pressure and kind of alternate between you know darks and lights it'll give you the effect of like space and and depth and stuff in a drawing which is sweet i get really excited when my students finally catch on to that and like apply it into their artwork without me reminding them sriracha All right, are we done with this one, or is there more to do? Yeah, we can move on. I'm gonna put. Oh, you do do the top part. And do yellow. Go. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the banner. So, coloring in a banner and making it look like a banner and not a flat piece of fabric is actually like kind of tricky. I did a. Yeah. 
I just started doing digital drawings for the first time, like right before kickoff, because I got a sweet Windows Surface for Christmas, and it was like oh, cool. the first time I'd ever done drawing on a on a tablet or anything. Who gave and you that? I got that from Brandon. Wow. It was a be nice Christmas gift. It's the gift that keeps on giving because I've been like doing tons of stuff, Snapchat filters, been like drawing funny things on photos. Yeah, you've it's been pretty crazy. nonstop this year. Yeah, honestly, um, this has been huge for me because, you know, I went to art school. It was really intense. Um, you make a lot of artwork. Some of it is kind of self-driven. Some of it is assignment-driven. But after college, I kind of dove right into teaching and never had time to make work for myself. So, you know, doing these robot drawings or even, you know, just stuff like this has been really, really refreshing for me. And it's it's been awesome. And I really appreciate the people that are, you know, following me on Instagram or following me on Facebook or, you know, tuning into these shows and watching me draw. It's pretty cool that people are actually paying attention to it because for a long time, a lot of my artwork would just kind of sit in a box or yeah. never get looked at. So well, That's awesome. awesome. And we love having you here. So to do all this, I think uh, we've gotten many, many, many compliments about kind of having a resident artist, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. cause, you know, because in our shows, I mean, they, they get long sometimes and we love to have people watching we have a lot of content to cover but I, I think it adds a nice depth to it that you know you can you can listen to what we're saying uh, but then you can you, know, you can watch you draw you can you know do it yourself kind of that sort of thing so I, I think that's awesome I just realized I just colored the whole banner blue pretty much and now I got to fill in <laughs> the other stuff so yeah I got to go back in I wish they did something that was banner like for the Dean's List winners for like championship Dean's List winners like, I think it's cool that you get a banner for winning Woody Flowers Award, but I I really wish that, um, like, they did more to recognize the students that win Dean's List. Because it's, like, a pretty elite crew of kids. Um, you know, like, they get the piece of paper at either the regional or the district championship, but mm -hmm. I feel like they got to step it up and do a bit more for those, those students. Oh, well, I mean, it's... Definitely, I think it would be a great suggestion for something like that. I, I agree. You know, that, that'd be awesome. Caltran, thank you for your six months, buddy. Appreciate it. I'm moving on to the yeah, we have, we have Yeah, we have audio keys now, so if you, uh, if you sub uh, or if you give us uh, uh, any, any bits or anything like that, I think it has to be at least 10 bits or any donation, uh, you'll also get some noises now with it. Uh, too. And uh, I forgot to mention bits because bits are something that um, you can actually get for free. Uh, if you're on, I forget how to do it on mobile, but if you're on desktop, uh, you can actually watch a couple ads. It'll give you bits and then you can uh, donate them to us or, or anybody else really. And it's a cool thing that Twitch has uh, offered for us. So so we're moving on to the uh, Flitty Wowers Award, apparently. The Flitty Wowers Award. This trophy is like a, it's like, what, silvery greenish? Yeah, it's, really... it's got. It looks like it has like a lot of like patina on it. Okay. It's like like a weird bronze patina or something like that. Uh, it's like super fancy. <laughs> I'm just gonna layer a bunch of random colors. Oh man, I have no clue what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Make it pink. If you don't know what to do, just make it pink. I don't have pink. Oh yeah, you don't. So you could do a purple. Yeah. Maybe I'll make the. Uh... Do a little brown. I think to start out with. I'm going to do little pink ball casters here because you know why not. <laughs> so the, the Flitty Wowers Award, I remember uh, that. I'm not saying it originated because we don't want to claim things originated on our show and steal it from anybody. Uh, uh, the Flitty Wowers Award, I know it came up on one of our shows uh, when we had uh, Brando and, uh, was it Tom, right, was on? Yeah, Tom Bot. <laughs> How do you say it? Tom, I think it's Bot Bata Glary. Okay. We so just call about as bad as Carthacana Gas Bathby, but uh, yeah, and I remember them bringing up the with the Couch Division, right? Was the the Floody Wowers the Awards? The Floody yeah. Wowers Award. <laughs> so we have a woman in New England. Her name is Liz Califf. She's like one of the um, original Woody Flowers Award winners. I think she won it at the championship level, but she has the most like heavy like Massachusetts accent, and I so badly for any first just want to record her saying the woody flowers award like <laughs> stripped 
and play it because it literally sounds like the woody flowers award is awarded to like it is so thick and heavy it's That's amazing awesome. it's got to be recorded somewhere oh i'm gonna do it this year and just start playing it like that'll be a ringtone during <laughs> robotic season it's too good how do you feel about um the way that they do the winner for woody flowers at at both champs like i i was watching the houston feed this year and saw glenn won and i was like what <laughs> Yes, finally. And then I was like, wait, he's not there. Well, and yeah, obviously I was in Louisville at Vex Chance with him. So that, oh, yeah. So that yeah. was, uh, yeah, I mean, we all saw that and a lot of WTF started coming up. because. So, I mean, with, with Houston Champs getting done so late, literally we were done with Vex Champs and we're already many drinks in after the after party. So we're all just have our phones out as we're watching the end of, of uh, Houston Champs. And and we hear that, and we look and like, like what the hell? Like he he wasn't at the party at the time because he had to like leave for an early flight. But like what? Where is he? So uh, I'll actually tell you a, a funny kind of a cool story. Um, so uh, Glenn and I, uh, Glenn's a great guy, and I've known him for a few years, and he's actually a, a big reason why I'm going to to the China event uh, next week or two weeks from now. Sorry, uh, and. I actually went around, and of course, there's a lot of a lot of big names in first that are at Vex Rules, and we went around and just kind of just recorded everybody, just saying congratulations to them all around. Um, and, yeah, and we really tried to get him to come out for a drink with us, but uh, said he had like a a six a.m. flight going back to Hawaii uh, okay. to to go back to Hawaii, then to go back to St. Louis, you know. So <laughs> just ping pong back and forth. Yeah. So that's crazy. There you go. Well, it's definitely definitely Brando, one of those... Brando, thanks for the bits, buddy. Those are all. Those are all going to our to our artists. Noise. It's it's towards a new uh, a new surface. To, or a camera, <laughs> so people can actually see what I'm talking about. Not awkward. Oh, you heard it, Brando. She needs a camera. <laughs> can buy my own camera. I'm a working <laughs> lady. Yeah, uh, he he ain't put no ring on that yet, has he? No, I just want a dog. I don't need a ring. <laughs> Both of my pets live in tanks. We have a, a betta fish that somebody left at my district event um, on the scoring table for two days. And then I have a uh, leopard gecko who's also a part-time class pet. That's like the best part of being a teacher is having a class. Well, not the best. One of the best parts of being a teacher is having a class pet. Yeah. You know, I take care like, of it most of the time. Yeah. Well, and then the kids, like, you can just hang it over their head and use it as, like, incentive. That's what I do with my first grade is I'm like, oh, if you don't behave, like, tacos isn't going to come out today. <laughs> By the way, Brando says you're already using his webcam. I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what you're coloring right now, it's a paper airplane going to a Target that says, uh, stop being a jerk. What's up with that? Uh, you know, the paper airplane situation. I feel like it died down this year. But oh, big time. Big time. In in years past, it was just completely out of control. Like, even up in the nosebleeds, people are, like, getting pegged in the face during Einstein and stuff. So it was good to see that it died down this year. Like, yeah. you know. Well, when, like when you don't have an Air Force general telling you to make them and throw them, that helps too, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you a funny story with the paper airplane. So uh, the last year, yeah, last year, so I was sitting in – um, all of a sudden, I, uh, it was last year, a couple of years ago, I get a paper airplane uh, thrown from the balcony and it says like, it, it's one of those like, you know, ooh, call me or add me or like, you know, text me or something like that. And it turns out it's, it's, so, it's a student on an alumni, on my alumni team. So, <laughs> so I text a teacher about that and I'm like, I'm like, here, look what I got. And he just, he, he calls the student. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, it was, it was great. It's like, oh man, like I know I'm a jerk, but it's like, oh, it's so it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. I, when I when uh when I was on Wave, I'd always be like, man, like all all the rules that have been established are based on what myself or two other alumni did. Yep, that's that's pretty much the way it works. That's kind of how it goes on 125 too. Like we have so many young mentors or just you know mentors that are alumni on teams that they feel like they've already done it all, so we can anticipate it all. Like, there's no getting away with anything on our team. <laughs> so rope is just the, the yelling of the rope, right? You mentioned yeah. you're looking forward to that going away. Yeah, I feel like I I would never be a good air pilot. Like, I just get so 
distracted by everything. <laughs> like I'd be like, oh wow, this is a great view for the match, and completely forget to to actually make stuff happen. And another thing, so I the Carson Division was right next to the field that 148 was on this year at Champs in St. Louis. Sure. And I think it was during one of their elimination matches, their pilot heard the like 30 second warning from yep. another field and dropped their rope. I was watching that when that happened. Oh God. Yeah, like, that, that's exactly what happened. I literally can't even imagine. Oh man, yeah. They, and they lost the match because of it. Stinks. Like they would, they would have won the match otherwise. Yeah, I was watching that match. So, uh, a couple of people asked us previously. We'd be talking about IRI. So, uh, one thing I just want to ask you with the rope: Are we? Do you think we're going to hear rope a lot during IRI, or is that like all these teams are so like veteran and, and seasoned that we're not going to have to worry about that? I'd like to think that everybody knows when to drop their rope at this point, but you never know. Well, and, and it could be new people on the field, too. There are some teams who, you know, like 11-14, for example, uh, they put out new drivers, and, and okay. I don't know if they do new new uh, people in the airship. But, man, I would not, you know, I I would never want to be in the airship. I I agree with you on that, and I said, like, being in the airship this year is like being an offensive lineman. When you do well, nobody notices. And the moment you screw up, everybody, like, just hates you. Exactly. Not cool. Right. Yeah. It is pretty cool though that they got to like go out onto the field and be in the airship, like in the middle of all the action. So. Absolutely. Um, hey, folks! Just a reminder as well too. Uh, Christine's going to be giving away her drawing actually uh, at the end of the show, right? By the way, I should confirm. Yeah. That. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so, in order to do that, you do have to follow our channel, uh, and then we'll have a uh, part at the end where you can. Uh, put in a phrase, and you'll be able to have a chance to win the drawing. If you are a subscriber, you will get five times as many drawings. So you don't have to put it in five times, but you'll get uh, essentially five tickets when you do that, so you have a better chance of winning, unless you're Caltran. And uh, we hope that uh, you stick around at the end of the show, and you'll have a chance to get that. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with mine yet. Maybe I'll give mine away too, but I don't know who would ever want that. I think I, You know what I'm going to do, Christine? I'm going to hang it up on the refrigerator, because it'll be the first yeah. thing I've ever been able to do for that. Nice. There you go. I like that. I think everybody should hang theirs up on their fridge. <laughs> so who's this gentleman uh, that we're coloring right now? Mr. EJ. Mr. EJ. Oh, uh, is he... I don't know. Is he still active on 254? I don't think so. I think that he's, like... He's, like, on a, a hiatus, kind of, right? Yeah. I think he kind of changed jobs and got busy with life things, yeah. but... I feel like he's still very legendary on that team. He's legendary, period. Yeah. Right, and if you, if you haven't seen it, you need to, like, he's in a few other ones, but you have to check out the uh, 254 2014. Uh, I forget what the video is called exactly, but, like, where he does, like, the EJ shuffle and stuff. Oh, my God, but, yeah. Like, I had, like, that year there were so many students that just, like, they wanted, to, like, us to put that in a reveal video of them, like, doing some sort of dance. <laughs> and we did it was really stupid but <laughs> it's still fun i'm i'm going with the pink tonight pink sunglasses going, going pink hard. robot yep there we go yeah so i'm pumped for iri um i think this year's game is awesome and the the lineup of teams that are going is pretty epic yeah, so I yeah I'm very pumped too, and I think the the one thing with IRI like I've noticed on certain years there are years where IRI makes games that much better, and there's there's years where you know teams are already pretty good. Like I felt last year that the game didn't really get that much better um, at IRI because because there are a lot of teams that are already quite good at, at scoring balls, right? Um, mm -hmm. But this year you look at the lineup at IRI and you're just like, man, there there's no way that a record's not going to be broken again. Like it's it's absolutely crazy, just the, the lineup of how many fuel scorers there are. There's, I mean, it's very likely that alliances one through eight are all going to have good fuel scoring robots on them. Yeah, like, oh, I, I, have, I have two good fuel scoring robots. I mean, I think this year with it being split champs and like some of these really elite teams being kind of split up, it will be pretty magical to see them kind of come back together for IRI. Absolutely. Let me let me take a look here at your. Your video link. Sorry, I was going to play some noise. Yeah, that is definitely one. Well, remind me, we'll play that video later up on screen of the uh, 
254 2014 video. All right, so I, I think you saved the best for last year, and this is the one that made me laugh really hard. And if anybody can find this video, that'd be awesome. There, there is a Twitch clip, I think, uh, on so on the on the site for because this is at Las Vegas Regional, right? Yeah. Um, there is a Twitch clip for this, I think. Uh, but if somebody can find it and post it, that'd be awesome. But can you can you kind of tell us, Christine, a little bit about uh, Team Fifty Twelve here and their legendary robot? Yeah. So I mean. The robot was awesome. It was this tiny gear scoring robot, but in the, I think it was during the semis at Las Vegas, like the robot comes in a frame, it's picking up a gear, everything looks fine. All of a sudden it comes back into the frame and its bumpers are just dragging like a snake. And it, they show it like driving around the field and the bumpers are just like wiggling around. Oh, Brandon posted the link to it and it, it's too good. <laughs> Best clip of the year. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you can, cool. you can click on that. Actually, I'm going to bring that up on screen here real quick. As you should. Yeah, hold on. A little bit of volume going on here, too. Fuel for the Blue Alliance. There they go. And they come back, the and their bumper is missing. <laughs> well, I'm going to just rewind that real quick here. <laughs> well, this leave. <laughs> the and they are part snack once they come back. On the field. There's one in the middle of the field. <laughs> They're coming in with a floor pick. I'm having some trouble picking it up. 50-12 dragging a whole bumper along their robot. <laughs> 987. They're looking. They have a gear in their possession looking to start running gears for the Red Alliance. That's so good. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I mean, shout out to whoever made those bumpers because it stayed in one piece. Like, they didn't just break off and, you know, sit is, on the field. Is, is 50 12 the one as well that when they went to climb, that they climbed right on their bumpers too? I don't know if that was them or not, but I think the fact that, like, Las Vegas had this oh. bumper circus going on yeah. was amazing. And they still counted that climb where the team just, like, rose right out of their bumpers <laughs> and hit the touchpad it's like all right well sometimes they're more uh liberal than others on that i guess so yeah oh i like the i like the snake thing or the uh grass thing there with the snake that's cool oh thanks I, again I need, I need to go darker use some bright colors for the text i feel like there's been other like robot memes that i've seen where just like parts of robots completely fall off well, yeah, I mean, geez, in 2016, they would instantly disable you for that. Yeah. That probably happened this year at some events, too. So a lot of that inconsistency. Yeah, New England, like I said before, if your bumper's, like, wiggling or sagging, most times you will just get eat stopped immediately. Mm -hmm. So uh, 125 for IRI, have you guys made any changes or modifications at all? Um, nothing major. I think the kids are going to do a, a last kind of sweep of the robot on Monday to make sure that everything's working well. Mm -hmm. um, no physical changes, though. Just hoping to kind of refine and tune things up. Yeah. Did you did you guys do any other off-season events yet? So we've done our own, Beantown Blitz. It was, yeah. I think, two weekends ago. It went pretty well. Um, it was the hottest day of the year most humid day of the year as well too so our robot was like blowing fuses because of the heat <laughs> but um yeah nothing else so far so we're really excited to get back into it at iri i i forgot about the bean town blitz and i i'm gonna just bring up uh, uh that video real quick of the uh, human player uh, <laughs> my stuff that you were doing there Dude, my elbow rug burns are finally healing it's been like two weeks of having like really raw elbows totally worth oh, it though no. i'm making it for that purple there you go. i'll bring this up here again yes that was a good time no injuries too huh wow no, just some crazy rug burn. When I was filming that from the airship, I like looked down at one point and I thought they were gonna like run into the davit, but nobody ended up doing it. 
Uh, it's def- definitely good. So how do you, how did you score points? Just whoever got the most in the bucket or what? Whoever got the most in their corner. So everybody had a – there were three people on each team. So one person was lying on their stomach, one was driving around, and then the third person was in the corner kind of corralling all the fuel and hoarding it and keeping other people from stealing it. So, okay. Yeah. So it was a good time. Yeah, the human player ones are awesome. I know there was uh, – Israel did a really fun one this year. I remember them sending me a video of that. And I, I remember, like, 2011 IRI, we did one with, like, a mini-bot race. Ooh. That was pretty fun. And actually, uh, our producer, Nick, who was actually a student at the time where he just graduated, uh, he built me this backpack that essentially was a mini-bot delivery device, but it was pneumatic. <laughs> it was pneumatic, so it was stored energy on it. And so it, was, it had this, like, back end to it that, like, you hit a button, so I'd be laying down on my stomach. You hit a button, and it would shoot out, and it hit the pole and engage the minibot. And I literally almost completely beheaded Mark Coors, if I remember correctly, Whoa. On, on the field <laughs> with it because this giant metal prong hanging out. I remember, I don't I don't remember if it was Mark Coors or it was, but I remember Andy Baker just pulling these guys like, dude, you, like, almost decapitated somebody. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> I feel like what I'm not done a lot of orange. Let's do that. So where does where does Steamworks fall? So what was your first year in FRC, by the way? Um. So as a groupie, it was 1998. As a groupie. Yeah. When I was in the third grade, hanging out with my my grandpa on the team. Wow. Yeah. So where where does Steamworks fall upon your 21 season history now? Um, it's definitely up there. I think by the time champs rolled around, the the play of the game ended up being really cool. There was a lot of you know different strategies going on. It's probably in the top like 10, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't really know if I have like a super duper favorite one. Like in 2007, I loved that game because I was a operator for that, so it was really fun to operate. I don't know if it was as visually engaging for the audience, but like 2005 was awesome. Um, 2000 actually is probably one of my favorite games. That that is a cool game. That my first year was 2001 as a freshman in high school, but I definitely recall 2000 quite well because uh, that was a cool game. Now 2001, on the other hand, oh, my gosh. freshman year was the worst game ever in first. <laughs> and don't you 2015 naysayers ever say anything different because I guarantee you 2001 was way worse. So funny story about that. Today when we had the a group of students come in for the demo, um, 125 won champs that year in 2001. Um, they were like the last pick on the alliance. And Oh, really? <laughs> our, one of the students that was giving the demo today on my team was like, yeah, that doesn't really count though. Like, <laughs> Did your robot literally do anything? Did you flip the I, bridge? Was that it? I have no idea. We have that robot still in our lab, and it's got, like, the most insane drivetrain ever. But the kids were like, what do you mean? It really didn't matter. And we pulled up a video, and they were like, oh, okay. (laughs) And this was after we showed them, like, this year's game animation, you know, 118's reveal video, our reveal video, and, like, a bunch of matches. And they went and saw that, and they were like, oh, okay. Like, we we totally get it now. It's like, yeah, things have kind of changed, so... So I want to add some context to Brando's comment here about the ESOT immediately. So in 2001, you actually got a time multiplier for when every... So it was a 4, 4B0, so it was just four robots scoring points, right? And the quicker that everybody e-stopped, the bigger multiplier that you got, which is just the craziest thing to think about now because if you e-stop, like, that's a disqualify, you know, like... Yeah. And now in times. But back then it was just... You know, he just tried to go as quickly as he could, and Beatty was able to uh, pretty much get matches. by the. They were able to score almost all the points possible by the time the second uh, multiplier time limit hit, um, and we're just literally unstoppable. Like, it, it was absolutely insane to a whole new level. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Beatty just had this insane reign over the games for, like, years. Yeah, you know, like two- my entire year in high school. Yeah pretty amazing yeah yeah baby baby won three out of my four years in high school that's that's so nuts it's absolutely nuts <laughs> and of course so like you know us on a this is so this is something where like it always bugs me on, on people calling out teams and that sort of thing because 
Uh, you know, on a team that, you know, was okay. We weren't bad by any means. We made playoffs often, but didn't really go deep at all. You know, we were always so just envious and jealous of 71. And the the the, the thought process was like, oh, students don't do anything on that. And there's, you know, we actually thought the operator was like 25 and we wanted to get him carded because he looked old. And it turns out he's now a very good buddy of mine and runs <laughs> teams out of Milwaukee. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we're just like, oh, you know, we got to, we got to make sure we got to take them out, you know, and that, that was always the mentality that they're, you know, just totally mentor build or they cheat or something like that. And then, you know, you, you realize it's just like, man, instead of being jealous or anything like that, use that to get better, right? Learn what they do well and get better from it. Yeah. It's definitely a hard um, concept to teach to students and even mentors that are just so fixated on the fact that there's a team that just keeps winning and winning and winning instead of stepping back and looking at like how they get to that point. Nice. Uh, Clint Dodd, FRC buddy. Thanks a lot for your uh, subscription with Twitch Prime. Appreciate it. Thank you. And welcome, uh, welcome to fun nation, fun family. I will say though that this year's game was Probably one of the better ones in recent history. Um, I do wish, obviously, that the fuel was more of a, a tipping point. I think more teams would have gone for it if it was, you know, something that was more attainable. But, um, you know, I, I think it was interesting to see how it played out. It was yeah. confusing as hell to me to, like, wrap my head around the game at first. Like, when I saw the the reveal video for the game, I was like, oh, my God, I need to watch this, like, ten more times to understand like to try to tie the theme together and tie the actual rules and stuff <laughs> together. Well, and that was the thing when we had uh, who do we we had a Jared on right? Yeah. Um, and it, from the rules review committee, and hearing him talk about how originally they wanted fuel to be like, in order to get the RP to be like triple the amount oh of what it was, it's like, it's like wow. If it were a goal, like in twenty. I don't know, 14 with like a massive opening that was just really straightforward. That'd yeah. be one thing. But like the the goal was so small and it varied from event to event or even field side to field side. Like, yeah. I mean, I know I'm 125, like calibrating the camera and making sure that the vision tape was actually like aligned correctly on the field was a constant struggle from like, you know, week one on. But I just can't, I don't know. You're going to have sure to do it again at IRI. Yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully, I'm sure by that point, you know, the field will actually be set up correctly. Man, setting up the field and taking it down is easily, like, for this game, so insane. Like, I don't know how many people that are watching and listening right now have actually, you know, put together an event and set up a field, like, unloaded it from whatever container it arrived to you at. Like, but holy crap, it is physically and just like mentally draining so <laughs> shout out to all the ftas and volunteers that oh, actually yeah. did it this year thanks for making that happen yeah i mean there was what was the event uh that like they didn't get the field until like 8 p.m at night or something like that and they it was it's up by up by you guys in the uh, northeast somewhere oh yeah I, I know indiana like had a really insane week one setup and i know the waterbury district in new england had a really long setup time. I mean, luckily in New England, like most of our events are within two hours of Manchester. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people were running up to headquarters, getting stuff and bringing it back. But like, I can't even imagine being an event that's like, you know, pretty far away and get to this field for the first time before, like before anybody's actually set it up and has to do it. So I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that the field is, a little less intense next year when it comes to set up and take down. I think everybody <laughs> hope I think I think everybody hopes that including the people at work at first, I'm guessing. So in Manchester. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um all right Christine, so I think uh we're pretty well complete on the drawing. Uh anything in general you wanna talk about uh on final thoughts on this drawing before we kind of give it away and send it to a, a whole new home? No, I mean I I had an awesome time drawing it and kind of piecing together all these random things. Um if people are into this, I'd love suggestions for, you know, next month's coloring sheet and what types of things people want on it. I now that I've done this, I kind of want to make like just coloring sheets of robots for people to do. You know, like adult yeah. coloring books are like the new craze for people to sit and relax and meditate. You know, maybe we can get something going with the first community and and get like Zen robot coloring 
We'll Jeez. put on some meditation music next time too. <laughs> Maybe this is what we all need during build season. You know, right? like just <laughs> once a week we all just sit down in silence and and do some coloring. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And if you have suggestions uh, for drawings for next time, you can either uh, shoot us first updates now on uh, Facebook or Twitter, or Christine has wordplay all day on Facebook. You can go check that out. Um, Christine, you also have an Etsy page as well too. I do. So wordplay all day on Etsy, um, custom robot drawings, lots of awesome magnets of a few awesome robots. And I will hopefully be pumping out some drawings for the IRI auction in the next few days. So we'll we'll see how that goes. So you're going to be doing some for the IRI auction? I think I am this year. Last year, one of my friends yes. was like, you know, you should put something in. And I was like, I don't know. You know, I don't I don't think anybody would want that. But um, I had some ideas for the IRI auction this year. I think it'd be fun to put something in. So, so I want to talk about a new thing real quick. And I'll give you a plug here uh, with the, the robot magnet. This is freaking awesome. So this is a magnet that is just of your, your drawings here, right? Yeah. So the company that I use to make them is Sticker Mule. I don't. I think a lot of teams have used their website before, but their products are amazing. Quality is unreal, and working with their um, employees has been really cool to to turn my drawings into magnets. Which it's like making a you know a little drawing a little more extra fun by making it functional as a magnet. So, and I actually they sent me this like massive coupon deal for getting I think 50 of them printed for really cheap. So I pumped out a drawing before the deal was over and. Um, made magnets of my team's robot this year and got to give it out to everybody in our team and the kids and the mentors really loved it because it was just like one little tangible thing from this year that they could hold on to and remember how awesome our season was so wow that, that's so cool and, and, and christine just all the stuff you're doing it is really really awesome i i hope the frc community appreciates it i know we appreciate it here at fun and we love having you uh, as a partner to do this because this is this has been a lot of fun today too so thank you so much for uh for coming up with this and just cranking out i think this is something we have uh, we have a good thing moving forward thanks it's been awesome being on here and you know I, I look forward to to doing more stuff and i love seeing the feedback people have and i love seeing people get excited about you know the the robots that we're doing um so yeah this has been awesome so christine i think we need to give away the coloring sheet here or the the sheet uh that you did uh so what's going to be your your catchphrase of the day what, what am i going to type into this keyword here to have people uh, sign up for it. And, and before you said, just a reminder, you do have to be a follower, um, which is free to do. Just click that. Or you can be a subscriber. And if you're a subscriber, you get five times as many entries. Uh, subscribing is either a few bucks a month, uh, or you can do it for free through Twitch Prime. So what's our keyword for today, Christine? Let's do, I tried my best. Because <laughs> I think anybody that was doing this at home, I'd like to think they tried their best. So I tried, this is all going to be one word. It's not case sensitive. Um, all you got to do is just type that in. And that will uh, be as part of the uh, giveaway. So just like how I typed it there, I uh, put that in. We'll give that a little bit of time uh, and see uh, how many entries we get. Um, go ahead and spam if you want to. We don't have a spam filter, so we I don't care. We're always kind of uh, cool with that. You can do that <laughs> as much as you want uh, on here. So uh, we're going to make sure our Nightbot's not eligible to win. So we'll, we'll do that for a little bit. Uh, and with that, go up on there. Uh, so, Christine, you are going to IRI. When are you coming out? What day What day are we going to catch up? So the Neutrons will be driving out there. We're going to be leaving Wednesday, and we should arrive for Loden. Um, pretty excited for it. Last year I flew because my team wasn't there, and I went with uh, my best friend Jamie, who's the FRC team advocate. And it was cool to see. It was cool to be at an event without a team. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, and last year I got to go around with her and she was kind of interviewing teams, um, going through a series of questions about the kit of parts and their experience. Um, and she was asking about two champs and it was cool to see that the feedback that the first staff members gathered from IRI definitely went back to the ears at headquarters. And now we have festival champions coming up in late July. So I'm excited to go to IRI, though. I can't wait to eat my way through the weekend between the corn, <laughs> the potatoes, and the pulled pork. Like, I have been hitting the gym so hard just so I can go there and feast for, you know, two days, three days. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting here. Uh, and we do actually, uh, we're going to be doing a First Updates Now show on Tuesday uh, for an IRI pre-show. It will probably be a little bit of a shorter show, just talking about some of the teams, uh, some predictions. We're going to have that as well. Um, and I do want to tell you guys, too, uh, we are in the works. It is not fully confirmed, but I think we're good to go, uh, that we're actually going to do a live show at IRI, uh, live 
uh, first updates now show uh, right before the talent show. So we're going to do it on stage. Uh, and it's going to be an interactive show. So we're going to have uh, SU members of the audience that come up on stage. Uh, we have a couple of uh, kind of fun ideas of what to do for that. Uh, and you'll get a chance to win some prizes as well. So if you're actually at IRI, uh, we're most likely going to be doing a live show. Uh, and uh, we hope that you catch that out. So that will be whenever the last like matches get done, grab some of that free dinner, head to the auditorium. Uh, you can join us for a show. We'll do that right before the talent show. And we'll confirm that uh, as we hear back from that. So very exciting. So we're going to give you one last uh, one last shot here. Once again, type in "I tried my best." Uh, they'll give you a chance for entries. We're going to roll for that in just a moment here. Uh, Christine, you mentioned uh, when we were talking offline before you were looking at doing something maybe like on a monthly basis. I think we could definitely get that going. And uh, I hope I hope chat room. I hope you enjoyed it. If you if you like this, uh, tell other people about it. Say, hey, you know what? Come check this out. You can you can just draw something. You can hang out, talk robots. You can do whatever you want, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to do more of this, Christine. I hope you want to as well. Yeah, definitely. I had a blast doing it, and I feel like everybody could use a good coloring sheet every now and then. Excellent. So we're going to roll for the drawing here, and our winner is going to be Clint of FRC, who just resubscribed here. He, he's actually said he wants mine. So here's what That's I'm going to do. <laughs> well, that, that's fine, but I'm going to re-give away. So, Clint, if you really want mine, let me know in chat. And then if that's true, we're going to give away your other one here. <laughs> so so let me let me know. I'll, I'll wait a second to see. If you really want mine, I will send you mine. Uh, and then we'll give away Christine's again. So let, let us know here in chat. All right. So he wants <laughs> our – so we're going to – we'll roll again. Um, and so Clint, you'll get mine. Uh, just uh, shoot me a PM with your information, either on Facebook uh, or on uh, uh, on here on sorry on Twitch um, as well. So we'll do can subs with five X months. Yeah, Caltrain, you're in, man. I mean, I, I have you selected here. Uh, do it. So we're gonna roll again. <laughs> and of course, Caltrain, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, Hacko Jin, you win Christine's drawing today. Nice. So congratulations and thank you. So Hackagen, three month subscriber, thank you so much. Uh, make sure you shoot me your uh, contact information. We'll get that mailed out to you. Probably be a few days. Um, I will try my best to get this out before China as that's coming up very soon. So congratulations to our winners. Thank you everybody uh, for tuning in to this pilot episode. We're so glad uh, that you were here to join us. If you want more of it, let us know. Let everybody else know in the community too. We'd love you to post on Facebook or Chief Delphi. Uh, Christine, anything last things to promote before we head out for today? Uh, not really. Just, you know, follow both fun and wordplay all day on Facebook and all the other social medias. And make sure if you're at IRI to stop by and see everybody that's there. I know I'm going to be there. Tyler's going to be there. I think Justin's going to be there, right? Yeah, so yes. I have, uh, so I'm going to be emceeing. Justin's going to be there with his alumni team. Uh, 340, you're going to be there. Uh, we have a few of our shoutcasters that are going to be there. Ryan Donia will be there, I know. Uh, and I'm trying to remember if there's anybody else. So, yeah, definitely a few of us there. And we're going to be doing some interviews at IRI, too. So, yeah, please just come by and say hi. We'd love to talk to people. Yeah. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. We're going to end the stream. Thank you so much for everybody who tuned in, and we'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then.